Hello, and thank you for joining me for this presentation on how to complete ENS Module 1 for the NOI instructions. We will also briefly touch upon additional requirements for a complete submission of ENS materials for a PAGO2 and PDES permit. My name is Michelle Meener, and I'm a Senior Resource Conservationist with Allegheny County Conservation District. Please check out our website and many of the social media platforms is listed below for other available webinars, presentations, and digital materials that ACCD will be developing and posting in the coming year. Where can you find both the ENS Module 1 and the helpful NOI instructions? Well, I have provided two different links for you to use. The first is Allegheny County Conservation District's link, and I've also provided the steps to take from our homepage to get you to that document. Now, clicking on this document does link you to the second web page that I've provided, but I've also got the direct link as well as all of the steps to take to get to that document from number two, which is DEP's website. This can be a little difficult from either website, so please feel free to get in touch with ACCD and we can help you find these forms. ENS Module 1 contains 20 items that must be submitted with the PAGO2 NOI. I will briefly describe each of these items to help you submit a complete Module 1. All ENS plan drawings and their supporting calculations should also be provided, but please keep in mind that the module is replacing the narrative, so the items that ask for descriptive, detailed information should be filled out completely in the space provided. However, some spaces may not be large enough, and additional sheets may be attached as necessary. Item 1 addresses topography. We ask that you provide detailed description of the existing topographic features of the site and its immediate surrounding areas. This includes land cover, existing structures, drainage patterns, surface waters, and other key features. Item 2 is asking for information for the soil types found within the project. This space should be utilized to provide information on each soil type, as a copy of the NRCS printout will not be accepted as an alternative to filling out this section of the module. All of the requested information shown within this table should be entered, unless of course it's not applicable, such as hydric soils. A detailed review of soil limitations and their resolutions must be included in this section as well. If hydric soils are present, a wetland determination or delineation must accompany the submission. An exception can be made if, for example, the entire project area currently exists as a paved parking lot, um, so we know there's not going to be a wetland there. Otherwise, we need to see the documentation. Also, please note that urban soils are considered hydric. If contaminated soils are present, the three items that are listed here are necessary for the review and should be included. Description should be detailed and additional sheets can be attached as needed. Under item three, please provide a description of the land use for the past 50 years, present use, and future activities, and discuss how the land will be altered by the proposed construction. Item four discusses runoff. Use this section to describe the volume and rate of runoff, not only from within the site, but also the area up gradient that flows onto the project. Provide a site-specific narrative stating how the runoff will be managed during the ENS phase. Item 5 takes up two pages of the module and has a list of almost all of the standard ENS BMPs that can be found in our BMP manual. Here, all ENS BMPs proposed on site should be accounted for by checking the appropriate boxes. Identify the ENS plan drawing numbers where each BMP is shown on both the site drawing and the details page. You must also include the sheet number where O&M requirements have been listed. Explain any deviations from the ENS manual and identify alternative ENS BMPs at the end of the list. As a reminder, any alternative ENS BMP proposed must be accompanied with documentation stating that this VMP was approved by DEP prior to the submission. Table 1 is located under Item 5. 
and should be left blank for PAGO2 submissions, as this is only a requirement for our future PAGO1. The box for item 6 should be checked if standard ENS worksheets have been utilized and submitted as attachments. These standard worksheets can be found in Appendix B of the ENS BMP manual. The box for item 7 should be checked if information or calculations are provided, but not through the standard ENS worksheets. Equivalent formats will be accepted, as long as they provide, at minimum, the same information that's listed on those standard worksheets. An example of when this should be checked could be a company-created document that relates channel calculations that, again, provides the same information that can be found on our standard channel worksheet, but in a different format. If this box is checked, but no additional information has been attached, or standard worksheets were provided and really are all that are necessary for the review, the module will not be considered filled out correctly and will result in an incompleted item, which will lead to an incompleteness letter. This is just another reminder to please follow the NOI instructions very carefully so you can avoid these minor issues that can result in an incomplete submission. Item 8 asks that you provide the ENS plan drawing number where the construction sequence can be found. Unlike PCSM Module 2 that asks for the entire sequence, the sequence itself should not be entered in the space, just the drawing sheet number or numbers where the sequence is located. Items 9 and 11 are for the future PAGO1 submissions only, as noted on the module and these should be left blank for a PAGO2 submission. Item 10 should be checked only when standard ENS worksheets are not available or do not fully document design calculations. An example of this could be when the calculations are generated for a compost filter sock sediment trap. There's no standard worksheet for this BMP, but these calculations are necessary for review. As mentioned in the previous slide, item 11 is a PAGO1 submission only and should be left unchecked. Item 12 should always be checked for a PAGO2 submission, as this is confirmation that plan drawings were included for a review. By checking the box for item 13, this confirms that the applicant understands the requirements for frequent inspections during site construction, which is basically the life of the project. Unless the district eventually receives a correct permit transferee form, even if there's an agreement that's been made with another entity who will take over for inspections and maintenance, but they did not submit the transfer form to the district, the applicant will be held responsible for ensuring that inspections and maintenance take place during the entirety of the project. This begins after the pre-construction meeting when perimeter controls are installed, up until the project has been successfully completed and terminated. This box should be checked for all PAG-02 submissions. Items 14 and 15 are where stabilization is addressed. In the space provided, identify the location on the plan drawings for both temporary and permanent stabilization where the noted information is located. Only the drawing sheet number is needed, not the information itself. As you can see, many items are listed as the necessary information that must be shown on the ENS plan drawings, which differs between items 14 and 15 and can be used as a tool to double check that all required information has been provided. Standard worksheets can be presented as well for applicable materials. Item 16 is to be completed with detailed direction on proper recycling or disposal of materials at the project site. A plan drawing sheet number will not be accepted here as the NOI instructions explicitly state that a description is required on the module. Utilize the space under item 17 to identify the presence of any naturally occurring soil conditions 
or geologic formations that may cause pollution during construction, and identify BMPs used to avoid or minimize potential pollution. The words unknown or none can be written here if appropriate. However, it is suggested that a plan of action be provided if unexpected conditions are encountered during construction. If these areas are known to be within the site boundary, they must be identified on the ENS plan drawings in addition to the description within the module. Identify potential thermal impacts during earth disturbance under item 18 and identify the BMPs used to manage these impacts. Item 19 should always be checked for a PAGO2 submission, as this verifies that the ENS plan drawings are consistent with the PCSM plan drawings. Item 20 is in relation to riparian buffers. Use this section to identify the plan drawing sheet numbers for existing and or proposed riparian buffers on both the ENS and PCSM plan drawings, if applicable. The final portion of ENS Module 1 provides information on the ENS plan developer. This section is to be fully completed, with all applicable information included and the correct box or boxes checked. The plan developer does not have to be a licensed professional, but they do have to be someone trained and experienced in the size and scope of design of this ENS plan. It must be signed and dated to attest to the accuracy of the information that was provided. It also verifies that the ENS plan developer is acknowledging that the ENS plan conforms to Chapter 102 requirements. I will use the remainder of this presentation to briefly go over additional requirements for a complete ENS submission. At times we get remarks that our completeness comments seem a little bit more like technical comments. And this might be true, because much of the information overlaps. We will be requesting complete or correct information during completeness review so that we have the right information to assess during the technical review. As we move through our completeness review checklist, we are ensuring that several items have been included, other than just a correctly completed Module 1. But, because it is so important, and where most of my incompleteness comments come from, let me remind you that signed copies of ENS Module 1 must be submitted and completed as dictated in the NOI instructions. We will also be verifying that details are provided on the plan drawings for each and every ENS BMP proposed for this project. We verify not only that worksheets and calculations are provided, but they are, that they are the correct worksheets. If only standard worksheet 12 for sediment basins was submitted, that won't do. An incompleteness comment will request that all necessary worksheets for sediment basins be provided for review. If the project site requires an off-site discharge analysis, to verify that runoff is being properly managed during construction and will not cause accelerated erosion, we most certainly will be verifying that not only was this provided, but it contains the necessary information. These are most likely required when runoff is discharged to a non-surface water. You may have several questions regarding off-site discharge, discharge analyses, including do you require one? and what information must be provided if you do. Please read through DEP's FAQ sheet. This is found on their website, and it should answer most if not all of your questions. This analysis is a completeness item during our review of ENS materials, and is most beneficial when included in the original submission so we can avoid additional review time or even a denied or withdrawn submission. We verify that a wetland determination or delineation is provided, that it was completed per the standards, and that the information in these reports are congruent with what was presented on the plan drawings. 
we also verify that the information provided for on-site contaminated soils is accurate, if applicable. We also take a look at what was submitted in regards to plan drawings during the completeness review. Do the drawings include existing and proposed topography? And are contour labels provided on all sheets for both of those? We verify that both the LOD and NPDES permit boundary are shown on the plan drawings. Please note that the entirety of both of these boundaries must be shown on the drawings. If an additional sheet is necessary, or a smaller overall map is included in a corner, this should suffice. We will not accept drawings that have a utility line traveling past the page through the drawing without showing where the LOD and the permit boundary end. Match lines are acceptable, but again, the entirety of the LOD and permit boundaries must be clear. If both boundaries are the same, in acreage, it is suggested that the legend reflect the same line type for both, or leaders can be used. We also need to see floodway, floodplain, and watershed boundaries, as well as receiving waters, if applicable, within the site project. Line types that are similar to each other can make for a very difficult and time-consuming review, so please be cognizant in making these distinctions clear. All discharge points are to be shown along with their ident identification number on the ENS plan drawings, as well as on the PCSM plan drawings. We also look through the drawings to verify that the locations of all proposed ENS BMPs are shown. This goes from concrete washouts to pump water filter bags. Proposed locations of where these are to be installed on the site are very important and these will be looked at more closely during the technical review, but we want to make sure that they are all shown during the completeness review, even if we have to adjust locations later. Drainage area maps are required for certain BMPs, such as channels, sediment traps, and even inlet protection, and will be checked for during completeness review. The ENS plan drawings will be looked at during completeness review, to verify that all site improvements, along with existing and proposed utilities, are shown. This also includes riparian buffers and off-site support activities, if applicable. If infiltration PCSM BMPs will be installed, the drawing should provide protection of these infiltration BMPs until the drainage area is completely stabilized. Fencing, additional notes, and other methods to call out these areas will be evaluated, as this is listed under the Completeness Review Checklist. Any avoidance measures specified on the PNDI receipt must also be shown on the ENS plan drawings if applicable. We also verify that the ENS drawings contain a site-specific construction sequence, a maintenance program for each ENS BMP, and recycling and disposal measures. Again, many of these items will be assessed more thoroughly during the technical review, but must be marked as complete or incomplete during this stage of the review. This concludes our presentation on how to correctly complete ENS Module 1 per the PAGO2 NOI instructions as well as other ENS requirements for a completed submission. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Allegheny County Conservation District or reach out to your regional DEP office. I can also be reached at the email address provided on this slide. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this presentation or are looking for more informative guidance, please check out our website and multiple other social media platforms to find additional presentations, webinars, and digital materials from Allegheny County Conservation District.